Good evening, everyone. Um, just a reminder that you've got control of your microphone and to turn it on, the meeting is being recorded. Um, apologies for absence. I've got apologies from Councillor Cathy Dowes, Councillor Hannan, and Councillor Miranda Williams. Any other apologies? Nope. Um, any urgent business? Any declarations of interest? Um, the minutes for the 28th of September, is everyone happy that they're accurate? Yeah, in which case we'll move on to the first substantive item, which is an update on the culture strategy. Uh, with us we've got Sarah Abley. Hello, I will assume that uh, you've had a, a chance to have a look at some of this and just briefly outline uh, the report. Uh, essentially, we um, have been through a procurement process to appoint a consultancy to uh, help us put together a, a culture strategy for the borough. Um, and the consultants are called Artreach. And they are um, now working with us and have already started work on putting together the, the strategy. Uh, the strategy work falls under four phases. There is uh, the mapping phase, which is to help understand the borough's context, the consumption of culture in the borough, and the uh, various demographics responses and uh, what, they, what they're consuming. Uh, the consult consultation stage, uh, which will include the engagement of residents, stakeholders, uh, creative sector, uh, etc. And then it will go on to propose priorities for culture in the borough. And then the final stage is to agree and uh, eventually launch the culture strategy, which will happen in spring 2024. So, so far we have completed the first phase, which is the mapping and the report of that is um, attached to this report uh, so the, the my report is, is quite brief because all the, uh, the the meat and the uh, the information from that first stage is in that phase one report so I will open to questions okay uh, uh, councillor Hartley we're all far too polite. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, thank you uh, for the report. Um, on the, a couple of questions. On the audience uh, research, uh, you know, we've learned in this report that um, uh, people who live in, in the Blackheath and Greenwich uh, postcodes are metroculturals, and the rest of the borough are uh, members of a group called Kaleidoscope Creativity, and there's information about this. Uh, what isn't in the report, and what would be helpful to know, is kind of the, the so what bit. Like, how is that audience data feeding into the strategy? What does it actually mean in terms of the choices that are being made? So those terms are part of the audience agency uh, spectrum of how people consume uh, arts. So there are descriptions, more detailed descriptions, and what we will do, it helps us to identify gaps or where um, where we might need to encourage people, or um, obviously nobody wants to force anybody into anything, but to, to show people what other opportunities there, there are, because there are lots of reasons people aren't consuming, and that could just be, it could be because of uh, all the various bar barriers, economic and social, etc. So these um, terms kind of capture the, overriding characteristics of a certain demographic so that we can then look and say, okay, well, are we serving that demographic with, is there, is there the content that matches what they want, but also is there, um, is there a need for us to provide opportunities for different types of content for, for people because they're only consuming what they believe is available to them. So it starts to shape things. However, what the next stage, the engagement stage, is the bit that will finesse that because it's all very well putting people into lumps of this, that and the other. But what we do next is we talk to people and, and say, what is it that you think 
culture is for you and that you want to celebrate or enjoy or make a career in or take part in. And it's that that will really define what goes into it. So this is the initial desk exercise, which gives us the overall picture of the borough, but it is by no means the defining thing that says we're now catering only to kaleidoscope uh, people. Uh, thank you. That's, that's addressed that point. Thank you. And my other question was um, on, I uh, appreciate this is at the beginning of this work and we'll get the further details uh, throughout the process, um, but could you just speak a little bit to what the consultants have been briefed to produce in particular around return on investment? So both financial return on investment and social return on investment. Is that kind of going to be in the strategy? Are we going to have a model of how we can measure um, return on investment, both financially and socially? Um, so if, if Councillor Sullivan was here, I'm sure he'd te tell us in uncertain terms how intrinsic uh, culture is to our economy and what the cultural economy can bring in terms of jobs and revenue, etc. And that links very much into also the work we do with Visit Greenwich, who do a lot of measuring on what our tourist economy, which includes in, in to a certain extent the cultural economy brings to to the borough so absolutely we will want to measure what our investment brings back to us um, and there are all sorts of measures we can can use there and also um, using the audience agency data to map how cultural consumption has changed if indeed it it, it needs to or, or does but absolutely, we will want to see what social value and what economic value we get from it. And it might be that the strategy will lay out how we want to achieve those things. And then through our program of activity that will link into the strategy, we'll then be able to set targets around what it is that we actually want to see delivered from those. Thank you. Um, that's, that's good to hear. I suppose what I would be looking for personally, and my, my kind of wish for this is to have one ROI model um, that is in the strategy or kind of outlined in the strategy that each, in each element that is then implemented is kind of measured a part of. Because I think in the past we've had some interventions where obviously there is an economic val value and you feel that, uh, you know, you see that and you feel that, but it's been hard. I think for the council to pin that down to to um, to, uh, to to quantify that return on investment, and I'm not just talking about economic but social value as well. So, um, just to make that comment, I think one ROI model I think would really benefit this work because then you could see how uh, and compare different projects. So, just as a suggestion from me, thank you, Councillor Salden. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, great report. Lots of really good stuff in it. One thing I did feel that was woven through it, but I was struggling to see where it was explicitly stated, was what is the overall strategic aim of the strategy? Uh, so I, I, I can see that coming in the sort of strengths and weaknesses, and I can infer stuff, but that's very dependent on, you know, my reading of where I think the issues are. I think, so my first question is, do we actually have an overriding strategic aim of the strategy? Uh, and secondly, how well is that segmented down? Is it segmented down to the individual uh, segment groups that you've talked about? And lastly, um, I think that was it actually. And lastly, well, lastly, is if there isn't one, is there plans to develop one? So you're, you're right that there's not really a strategic aim embodied yet because actually that is one of the things that we want to develop as a, a whole. So not to the council dictating, this is what we want to do for culture and please fall in line because we've had consultants do this for us. It's that we want our cultural community and our residents to tell us what, what they think the priorities for, for culture are and what we could, what, what they want to, to get out of it as well. So part of it, there's always things that we, we know we want to achieve. There's, you know, that aligning of culture across the borough so that we're all pulling in the, the same direction to achieve more, to be more, more efficient in achieving more 
um, is always going to underline that to pick out where we see you know after all of this engagement and research has been done what is it that we're missing and our, one of our strategic aims might be that we have to fill a gap in x place uh, whether that's geographical or cultural or whatever because we, we've clearly got something missing there so the actual strategic aims are something that we will get through through the strategy but the, the kind of the, the motivation to create this strategy was to bring us all together in knowing we have one direction, knowing what our strategic aims are, and then being able to uh, work together, pull resources, be a community that works as one in terms of creativity and culture, rather than we have disparate things happening here, there and everywhere, and we don't know whether we're concentrating on the right things or whether you know some things might be nice to to have and they might you know they might have some great outcomes but are we overserved on those outcomes do we need to uh, rationalize that we our funding in particular goes into x priority and there's this amount for it because actually we also have another priority that we need to fund as well so it's the, the motivation to have a strategy is to implement that um, direction, that working together, that uh, efficient use of resources that helps us work as one in a community to achieve more, essentially. Thank you. So just to summarise, it's like, no, it hasn't been developed yet, but that's part of the next phase of the exercise. Uh, one of the questions coming out of that and out of what you said there is that actually you've, it sounds like we might have a focus on things and outcomes. Uh, so I think in terms of a strategic aim, what I was after more is, you know, are we looking to improve uh, equality of access to cultural events? You know, is that an overriding agent? And if that's one of our overriding strategic aims, that can actually be done well ahead of the things that we're doing. So the things that you discussed in terms of specific events and specific types of things and what groups they might appeal to is a very sort of tactical level thing to me almost. At a strategic level, it's, you know, what are we trying to achieve through creating this? Um, and if that's something that's going to come, because, you know, is it about improving equality of access? Is it about improving uh, our creative industries and investments? Is it about, as Councillor Hartley said, generating a greater a rate of return on our cultural investments. That is all stuff that we can do up front ahead of the actual things. Is that something we're looking at or is that something that we can build into the so, process? So yes, but the, the, po the point is that we have to identify. So you're saying, uh, you know, creating uh, equality of access, this, uh, this, the engagement phase will discover where people think that they're not getting equality of access because just because this stuff is happening in a strategy now doesn't mean that we're not working on that so in terms of equality of access um, we've done things like for our grants uh, application processes we've started to ask people to articulate ideas rather than filling in very quite quite tricky forms equality of access to events we've started putting in quiet hours so that um, families who have members with uh, uh, SEN needs can uh, can access those events too. So we've done all the log logistical things around events and, and culture. We've reached out to different communities to support them to, to do uh, different things. And obviously Adele has the equalities agenda as well. So he's, he's made sure that we, we do all, all of that kind of thing as, as well. So. So yes, from the strategy's perspective, we will be looking at all of those things, but it's the strategy's job will look at where we are, where, where we're not doing enough. It will look at what, what things we need to prioritize for improvement. So yes, we will be looking at equality of access. We will be looking at return on investment. We will be looking at, at all of those things as well, but in turn, they all deliver outcomes because the outcome of quality of access is that more people engage benefit in the the various ways so so that's do, does that answer your question no not really uh, yeah, I, I, I suppose I I, I, 
Yeah, I, I suppose the thing is, you know, if you're going to do any exercise or anything whatsoever, uh, there are certain things, you know, unspecific things that you're seeking to achieve, you know. Uh, so, and I'm just I'm trying to work out, you know, what's our, what's our one sentence thing that we're trying to achieve through developing this strategy? Or is that something that's going to emerge? I think from a point of view, number one, we need to identify where the gaps are and we need to get organizations to start talking to the other more. Because at the moment, what, what's happening is organizations are battling each other for a small pot. It all belongs to them. But if they work collectively and, you know, and join up as a unit, they can not only uh, succeed locally, but they can uh, draw in external funding, or much more external funding. But at the moment, as any volunteer organisation or charity or you know, arts and culture organisation, they, they focus on themselves. We just want to open up that conversation of, you can work together. The, these are the remits that you need to look at, you know, accessibility, you know, value for money, and, you know, they can chair back office. So the gaps need to be identified clearly. But at the moment, it's all a lot of silo working within the culture sector. Thank you. Yeah. So, so that sounds like a strategic aim. I mean, what you've just described there is actually one of the potential strategic aims that we're looking to do through this exercise is to identify where cultural organizations within the borough can collaborate better to produce a better product. Now, that is something that we could say without doing any of the work. So what I'm just trying to work out is it would, might be helpful for us reading it and actually perhaps framing the work around what our, um, what our overall aim, you know, what is our, our vision for what we want. You know, and, and I don't mean events or whatever. At the end of it, you know, what are we hoping to get out of this? How is this going to be better than what we're doing now? Now, again, I don't know. We, this could be like an emergent strategy problem whereby we don't know that, in which case the answer would be actually, yes, we are hoping to get that overarching umbrella thing and kind of create a mission statement for our cultural strategy for the borough for the next however many years it, in the period. And, you know, if that's one of our objectives from, our, from this strategy, that would be a really useful thing because that's something we can hang all of our future decisions off. And I'm not hearing whether that's actually in place at the moment. So if it isn't, it would be, uh, I'd encourage you to maybe consider working out, you know, what's the one paragraph or a few sentences that, you know, are going to come out of this to describe what... What we're, what, what we're hoping to achieve through our cultural strategies, tactics, and all our initiatives over the next few years. Is that kind of clear? Yeah, I think, yeah, you're absolutely clear. And I think, uh, like you, you mentioned, the word collaboration is a, is a, is a main, main big one. Because, you know, as, as much as there's the big organization, but there's small organizations that can bring something niche. And it's about how we can connect them all to you know, think about working with each other instead of battling each other and, you know, you know, all the parts of isolating a certain group because of this. So inclusion, working together, making sure that, you know, power in numbers and bringing outside funding to not only to reach, you know, there's no way hard to reach, but making sure that accessibility for all. If I could just take that then, my suggestion would be, as part of the work that we're doing here, if we could come up with, you know, a one paragraph, 30 second version of this is what our strategy is seeking to achieve. Not now, but at the end of it, once we've done all of this work, this is where we've identified the gaps. If collaboration between groups is one, if improving return on investments is another one, if improving equality to access to those who are in the kaleidoscope segments or other segments within there are it, you know, those are the things that, you know, they call it an elevator pitch. You know, we should be looking to develop an elevator pitch for our strategy so we can easily articulate that out, both within our, our organization as a council and to all of our stakeholders as well. So I'd encourage perhaps if that could be done as part of what comes out of it. Um, can I just ask how this work interacts with the London Borough of Culture bid? Um, so there are there are various opportunities. Obviously, both bits of work are being done within my my team. So there's a big crossover there in terms of uh, discussion and collaboration and making sure that they work together. The, um, but there are, I think, depending uh, what year our bid is successful for, whether it's tw 2025, which is our preferred year, or 2027, 2025 um, will be a great time to consolidate whatever uh, our cultural strategy 
says. So we will get this uh, massive investment in culture. So all of the, uh, the priorities that we've uh, come up with, we can, uh, then we will have the resources to do a, a really good job about embedding that into how we work and also supporting the legacy from the London Borough of Culture as it goes forward. All the uh, engagement we're doing around London Borough of Culture as well will feed into um, the work that we're doing on the culture strategy as well, because that will obviously uncover lots of things and we don't want to be uh, doing the same thing twice. So it's all the intelligence is going into uh, one pot and the two are being developed side by side so that um, they will continue. The other thing is, if we aren't successful with London Borough of Culture, which would be a huge mistake, um, but if we aren't, then that uh, we then have a framework with which to try and uh, drive forward some of the ideas and uh, the, the input that our uh, local creative sector has given us and that there may be ways that we can then take some of that uh, forward uh, so that all of that work isn't totally lost as well. So there's back and forth depending on what the, the result is. Councillor Asgar. Thank you, Chair. Um, I probably should declare an interest. I'm on the board of Greenwich Theatre. Um, Thanks, Sarah. Um, I'm just seeing about the consultation. It says consultation will take place from September to November, and we're almost at the end of October. Um, so there's quite a lot to do. Has any of this consultation started already? So yes, we ha it, it hasn't um, started, but the line, all the work to, to line it up has so that we are getting our face-to-face -face consultation as the priority uh, and to uh, uh, various locations around the borough. Also at Sparkle in the Park, our Christmas event, we'll be doing face-to-face -face consultation. Then this will be backed up by digital um, consultation as well so that people who prefer to engage that way um, can, can do it. We've also already at our cultural summits for the London Borough of Culture, where we had more than, uh, I think it was around 150 cultural organisations from across the borough attend. We did a section on the Borough of Culture, um, sorry, the cultural strategy then, and so our uh, cultural organisations are already uh, understanding what, what we're doing and, and thinking about it, and we'll be in contact with them all soon as well to, to give their input. Thank you. Um, just looking at the list of stakeholders here, um, saying that there would be phone calls with these various organisations, including Greenwich Heritage Trust, Tramshed, GCDA, uh, Elton Arts, Black Female Entrepreneurs, uh, Visit Greenwich, Peabody. Um, I mean, GCDA, um, Greenwich Cooperative Development Agency, are mainly a food business at the moment, I think. Um, so I just want to know the rationale for, well, it's not really why GCD are on the, I mean, you know, they do great work and uh, that's fantastic, but um, I'm, I'm noticing a couple of omissions on here. I can't see Royal Museums Greenwich. I can't see Greenwich Theatre. Um, and yet it says one of the focus group sessions may take place in Greenwich Theatre or Greenwich Borough Hall, which um, would be great if that's coming back into use as part of this strategy. Um, I would like to ask as a ward councillor, that all councillors have knowledge of um, organisations operating in their wards who might not necessarily be on the council's radar. Um, and I think it would be really worthwhile reaching out to them. So, for instance, um, my ward is Plumstead Common. We have a fantastic arts organisation there called Art Plumstead, and they have been working for years in Plumstead creating culture for the community or you know opening up culture for the community we have Plumstead open studios every year they put on a variety of events um, so you know Art Plumstead is just one example I'm sure there's other great grassroots organizations um, in the um, in the borough as well um, that I think 
it would be great to have them um, take part in this stakeholder consultation. Thank you. So, do, did you want to? Yes, okay. okay. Um, Arts Plumstead came along to our uh, cultural summits, so we are in, in touch with them. Um, GCDA, yeah, they do do food, but food is culture. It's a very big cultural part of many people's lives. But they also do things like they run the front room in uh, Power Street, where lots of cultural activities take place in there. So, yes, you're, you're right. There are definitely omissions in that list. I wouldn't take that list as the, the final list as the, uh, uh, the consultant suggesting things to us. Obviously, we're not going to have anything in borough halls. Um, but it's... Uh, it's a list that, that can be refined and will be refined to, to make sure that, that everybody is involved. And that is just part of it as well. There, there will be much uh, larger reaching out to people than the actual one-to-one -to -one bits. So it has to come in as old chair, if you don't mind. I think you're, you make a good point. Uh, you, ward councillors do understand their wards really well. So we'll definitely be reaching out to ward councillors to you know, identify organisations that might not be on the list. There's a big list with, I don't know, over a thousand organisations on there. And also you mentioned uh, Greenwich Theatre. I, I am in contact with Nigel Fletcher quite a bit about that and he's very well aware. I have met him a number of times and discussed this with him. I also spoke to James Hadrill uh, last Friday about it, so he is very much in the loop. Wonderful, great news, good to hear. It's just because I didn't see their name on the list. Um, and just on the um, time scale of this, the, I mean, the aim is to get the um, culture strategy done by spring. How realistic do you think that is? Um, I, I believe it's uh, realistic, um, providing nothing untoward happens. We, we, we're on track to, to deliver that. Great. Um, if there are no further questions, um, thank you both very much. Um, enjoy the rest of Autumn Lates tonight. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, the next item is the Strategic Asset Review. Um, we have Councillor Aidan Smith, Cabinet Member for Regeneration, and Jeremy Smalley, Assistant Director of Regeneration. And have you got a name? So I haven't got a name. So uh, Steve Donovan, Head of Property. Um, Jeremy uh, is there. here. Yeah, I can see him. As well. <laughs> Would you like to kick us off? Yes, I'll, I'll kick you off then. Thank you. Um, so uh, at the heart of um, or the subject matter is the strategic um, property asset review, which I am uh, leading on, which... Um, as a quick reminder, is um, a program where we are shining a light on all of our um, individual uh, operational and commercial property assets in a sort of consistent and logical rolling program. Um, Scrutiny was interested in how that is going, um, particularly whether there are any outcomes from the process so far and also lessons learned um, and if there's anything missing from the process. Aidan, do you have anything you want to add? Or should we kick off with questions? Um, no, just kick off with questions, I think. Um, I think my first question, just looking at this, um, and I want to emphasise how keen I am that we do this review and how important it is, given the budget challenges that we're facing, um, to look at the best use of our assets. Um, is just, and I don't mean this in a disrespectful way at all, but obviously it's going quite slowly. Um, I think we last met about a year ago, and you've got, we've got 803 sites, including schools, 711 not inc including schools, and only 20 have now been presented for the internal cross-directorate review. So I wondered if you saw this process speeding up at all, what the challenges were, and what the plan was to tackle that. I believe there's now, uh, is it meetings every other week? Yes, so, what's, yeah. so, so thank you, yes. Um, so it is, it is a big task. All right. um, so within those 800 or 700 plus sites, there's over 1,000 property interests, so that it is a long rolling program. In fact, the process is, will be forever ongoing, so there's not sort of an end date to it. Um, 
and it is very it's resource intensive um, every property um, can be spoken about for a very long time and has multiple aspects to it it touches so many different parts of the organization it's intertwined often with other properties and of course service delivery um, and valuations etc cetera, etc cetera. so i do, do appreciate it may look like um, that it's taking a while but as um, Councillor Smith has uh, indicated we've now got, um, first we had to design the process, then we had to gather the data, and that takes a, a long time. And we had good, good data, but we need better data. And now we've got to the process, we're actually sort of delivering on that, and uh, well, that part of the process. So um, meeting every two weeks, allow, I think at the moment we may, um, and we, we've done more since the writing of this report, so we're probably at about 5% of the portfolio. And that, um, you know, there's some significant potential that's been highlighted from that 5%. Mm -hmm. um, so, of course, with the financial challenge that we face, and it's not all about looking at financial aspects. It's, of course, my, my real, uh, health and safety and property, um, service delivery, and then, of course, the financial contribution um, or the efficiency of the property. So um, there's more than just the financial demands, but of course they are um, a priority too. Thank you. And I certainly didn't mean it disrespectfully because I know there's how much work goes into each one. I just, I seem to remember from last time we were hoping the, the first whole round of the process, appreciating it's a rolling process that will go on in perpetuity, but that we were hoping it would be done within four years, and I wondered how realistic that was. I would suggest that it would be done in close to half of that time. One, one whole. It, you know, it's, a, it's sort of my, my team, and it depends what we mean by the process, because um, having a look and reviewing a property, so some might take, you know, 10 minutes, all right, because we fully understand the property, we've been through an exercise before, it's already on a disposal list, whatever it is. Other things, um, if you had to look at the village centre, the town hall, or so, you know, they, these are complex um, properties and they'll take a lot longer. But on average, you're sort of getting through about sort of one a day with, with, a, with a panel of, uh, you know, a small um, section of my team. I've got somebody leading on this, my involvement, some administrative support. And you can get through sort of one or, one or two a day but then you have to take it somewhere and then you have to have the conversations around it and generally what happens out of let's say every 10 properties there will be 30 to 40 action points that flow from those and that's one of the one of the learning points here is that you shine a light on a property you ask questions it is often met with more questions and then you have to go off and, and find those and find the resource to do it so um, in terms of getting through the whole process probably a couple of years at that sort of rate. Um, in terms of uh, sort of executing the outcomes of those, that property can take six weeks, three years to, to deliver on a particular property aspect. So you think your team will get through the evaluations within two years. Is that including the, the cross-board meeting to make the decision of what to do, or is that just the, the pre-work, if you like? Yeah, so... Um, I mean, primarily that sort of two-year really is the, the evaluations, but as long as we can keep the regularity of those meetings going, and I appreciate there's a lot of council business to, to get through, a lot of competing demands, but if we can keep going at the pace we're going, then we can, you know, it might take slightly longer than, than to do the evaluations because I might be able to do sort of, I don't know, five, five to, to eight, five a week, and, you know, we should be able to put that many every other week, five to ten, to, through a panel. So, on balance, about the same sort of time. Great, thank you. Um, Councillor Asgar? Uh, thank you, Steve. Um, is there any particular order that the properties uh, or the assets are being assessed in? For instance, I would think, because of what we're trying to achieve here, sort of bricks and mortar buildings that are occupied, th things like offices and meeting rooms and shops um, and day centres would sort of come higher on the list than parks, war memorials, things like that. Um, again, just to sort of be strategic about it, is it being done in that order? 
So, yeah, very good question because um, I've asked myself where to start many times. So there's, there's an informal um, approach, I would say, that um, is made up of a number of aspects. Um, there are comp competing demands of the organization. So um, obvious financial opportunities, maybe empty properties um, that we can um, derive a revenue from um, by renting out or by uh, disposing of and receiving capital receipts. So we, we're aware of some of those. Um, there are often properties that, that are in discussion between um, services. So there might be um, a focus on a particular property so, and it might be a good time to bring that discussion to a head so that might go in um, and then there are other you know there are um, uh, if you look at temporary accommodation for example which is a you know a, a lot of pressure on within the, the the borough so properties that might contribute towards towards that um, I've done this a number of times in other organizations and I've spoken to other organizations some go A to Z some uh, go, they'll take it service by service. So you might take a look at I don't know, children's services properties or that, that are used by children's services. So we try and be logical about it, but essentially we're taking the next one on the list unless there's a really um, pressing reason why we should include a particular property or group of properties um, w with, one, with a nod to all the pressures that we're aware of that the council is trying to achieve. Thank you. If a property is on a long lease, so yes. the council is a freeholder, but it's on a long lease and, you know, the landlord would not be able to re-enter for, you know, many, many years to come. Um, how much of a priority are those um, in the assessment? Because realistically, you could go in and assess it, but if somebody's on a 20-year lease or a 30-year lease or something, it, we won't be able to do anything with it or make a decision about it because it's protected by the lease. Um, Thank you. Yeah, sure. So, th yeah, there's a lot of um, complexity sometimes that we're tied into. Sometimes multiple interests. We can be freeholder. We can actually be tenant as well um, in, in some circumstances. And there are long leases. And you're right. If, if um, uh, when we're, we're going to look at each one, it doesn't mean to say we're going to spend an awful lot of time evaluating it. So where, there, where it's obvious that there's not much you can do, um, but even with a long lease, there is potential for having a conversation about um, a deed of variation or um, a, a swapping land, or you know, there might be an opportunity, just because it's a long lease doesn't mean to say there's no opportunity. But where it's obvious there isn't, and we're pretty aware of that, we, it, it goes down as, right, next property, long lease, not much we can do. We all agreed, yeah, and then we move on. Thank you. And my final question mm. is, um, are any assets on this list outside of the borough? Does the Royal Borough own any of these assets outside of the borough boundary? So almost none. There, I think there are some legacy properties that are outside the borough that we've inherited over, uh, over time or that we had, uh, that we're involved in maybe a, a, some shared you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago. Um, but the ones that I'm looking at, I'd, I'd say almost all of them are uh, in the borough. But there's bound to be one or two where a boundary change or a legacy property. We've, we've been gifted something like that. Councillor Hartley. Thank you, Chair. Um, is, uh, thank you for the report. Very uh, useful and interesting. Um, and the Chair's asked uh, the, the main question I had. Uh, another question is around the process. You've asked for, you know, what's missing from the process. Um, have you taken anything out of the process? Do, do you mean, do, is there anything that we started doing that we're not doing so much um, uh, now? I'd say it's, um, oh, have we taken anything out of the process? It's more um, refining what we are doing. So in a sense, we might be doing, um, you know, less of something, or um, we might, for example, um, I mean, an example that I had to, to, today is, and it often revolves around the communication, because, as I said to, to the chair, that it touches so many different parts of the, a single property or suite of properties can touch so many different parts of the organisation. It's about um, ensuring that just because you might be talking to one senior individual it doesn't necessarily mean that everybody's got to hear about what the action point is or what have you. So I'm looking very closely at our, our comms around this. 
Um, and I'd say that's my biggest lesson out of this, is trying to make sure that everybody who needs to know does, and that um, there's a good two-way flow of information, because we don't hold all the information in property, and we're challenging the organization about the use of it. So services have the, you know, the inherent information, but they're also busy. So trying to make sure that we've got this two-way flow of information, I'd say that's the biggest lesson for me out of this. That, that's a really helpful answer, thank you. Are, are you getting uh, the engagement you need from other directorates, other departments? Uh, uh, overwhelmingly, I, I, was, I, I am, because, um, and it's, you know, again, I've done this a number of times, and it can, it can seem threatening because you're looking at property, and when, as soon as you mention a property, the next question is, are you getting rid of it? And it's not the case at all. We don't go in necessarily with any predetermined outcome. We're looking at the best use for the public purse, best use for service delivery, that kind of thing. Um, so, um, and in order to do that, we can't do it without the input from um, colleagues within my own directorate, but also across the, you know, across the uh, organization. And where we are doing that, I'm getting overwhelmingly positive support. Thank you. Great, Councillor Salden. Thank you, it follows on from some of the questions that have been asked before. So in my previous dealings with the council, prior to becoming a councillor, one of the difficulties I had was uh, we were looking at a, uh, a building and we were looking at that through housing. Unfortunately, housing as a service could only look at theirs, uh, whereas ultimately the building for which served housing could be found and repurposed out of the education and adult social care portfolio. Are we looking across the portfolio as part of this exercise? Yes. Great. So as part of that, then, are we also giving thought to the repurposing of things? So, for instance, uh, football changing rooms, for instance, of my ward has got uh, football changing rooms to the north, south, east and west of it, but doesn't have any community spaces or community areas. Uh, we recently, we've got a large changing room facility, which is now given over to, I believe, a youth team to use once a week, which doesn't seem to be like a great use and a great return on our property portfolio. Are we looking at things like that as well? Yeah, so um, again, when it comes to, to property, shining a light on the property might um, engender a discussion or a debate. The, the actual use of our properties um, will be a, you know, down to services to, you know, to the and directorates to suggest what property needs there are or what needs there are in the borough. Okay, and what we try and do in property is help support and meet those needs. Um, having a look at the property might um, start that conversation. Um, I'm, I'm not specifically sure about that. We've, we've got to that one yet, but inevitably the answer is, um, yeah, where, where there is um, an ongoing service or um, a use in a particular building, it's part of the discussion. And if you were part of this, um, the officer panel that's looking at these problems that I take my suggestions and recommendations to, there would probably be sort of four suggestions to talk about, which would be of oh, four or five, it could be any number. It would be, you know, we could, this has a capital value and we could look at doing that, or we could, we've looked at two or three similar and there's an opportunity to share and make more efficient use, or um, we understand that there's a great need from the recent um, work that you've done for that particular um, use out of that property, um, does the property meet those needs at, the, at present? So all those questions we have an opportunity to ask. And, and it's really service driven and then property to support. Great, so would it be right to say we're kind of, I mean, the way in which it sounded to me is if I were to hear that, I'd hear that as we've uh, characterized it as reactive. So we've taken a look at what properties are doing and we've looked at actually within that individual property, this is how it's delivering value. Have we actually gone into that proactive stage? So, you know, for instance, if I've got a whole load of sports facilities and um, I don't have a toilet block there, uh, then actually by having a toilet block that was opened, that would create a whole load of opportunities for those to be more used. So it's not about, it seems to be very cost reduction focused at the moment, and I am wondering whether it's about value, is there a value enhancement uh, aspect we can bring to it? I derived greater value from it, not just commercially, but through use or whatever. Because at the moment it seems to be, well, this is a 
what we're getting in rent, this is what we could get, but we're not actually investing in it, we're not sort of speculating to accumulate, as you might have said in the 1980s. We're, we're um, speaking to services and asking them to think strategically about the buildings they've got and, and the use. Um, so, for example, communities, environment and central, um, are doing a study on the community centres at the moment to see whether the ones we have are the right geographical spread, whether we need as many as we have, whether they're delivering what we need. So we're, we're speaking to services about their, their needs and asking them, and, and obviously in the review, this is part of the, the rational probing and saying, right, actually this is what you've got, is, is that what you need? And, and does it meet your future needs? In fact, we're waiting for the outcome of that before we then start to strategically look at how best we can position real estate to support that, those needs. So I appreciate that it often does, and it's, it, there's a big conversation around the efficiency and the, you know, the, what, what a property's worth or how much we're driving out of it. But I can assure you that um, uh, one of my mantras is, you know, property's there to support evolving service delivery and, and not just, you know, service delivery, but community delivery and what have you. So that's really where I, the starting point and wherever the organisation can take the, the, the time to refresh and look at the needs of the community, then that is the best time for me to, to say, great, because we understand our properties, we understand them and how efficiently they can be used. And now we can look strategically at delivering to support those needs. And that's the way around it should be. There are some properties which are just purely commercial properties. So there's no community benefit as such. Other, you know, and uh, my role there is to get the best um, um, outcome for the public purse. Great. Thank you. So what I heard there is actually community value and value to the community is actually central and core to the process uh, that we have undertaking. So with that in mind, uh, just as a minor tweak, if, because I believe that's what we're looking at this for, is perhaps if we could say, add an even better if question to each of these, you know, at the bottom, you know, this is what we know about it, and even better if. So, you know, what could be done to actually enhance the value that it brings to the community, that it brings in terms of revenue, that it brings in terms of anything else to it as well. And it could be something as simple as, you know, you put a water fountain on the end of something, and then all of a sudden, uh, it's, it's far more lettable or actually it's being prevented from being getting its value to the community and its financial value to the residents of the borough for some reason. So, yeah, that would be... Thank you for that awesome. suggestion. Um, I was just curious, on um, paragraph 4.1, when you were talking about lessons learned, you've mentioned um, the need for property strategy policies and an updated scheme of delegation. And I can see from what, sort of what you said tonight where some of those gaps might be in terms of aiding your decision-making. Um, do you know... Is there any plan for that to be put in place? Well, it's, yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> lots of plans. Um, so we have um, various property policies. There's a constitution, okay, so, um, and that's our starting point, and I think periodically as an organisation we do look at that. So um, I'm, you know, I can't quote it verbatim, but I'm, a, I'm aware of that, and we follow that in terms of our governance process. Um, but, you know, life sort of evolves in the borough and we, we learn more, for example, um, Councillor Smith mentioning um, about the needs analysis. We need to ensure that we have a consistent and transparent approach to how we um, work with community organisations when they want to occupy our buildings. For, this just for an example. So in that sort of me suggesting that we need to have a look at that. I want to make sure that our processes and our policy for, for doing that is, is refreshed. It's not that we don't have one, it's just could we do it better? And how can we dust that down, look at it and say, is that still fit for purpose to now? So it's, it's really, but it all starts with the constitution. I'm not trying to change the rules necessarily, or if I did, we'd go through a formal process to suggest that. Um, it's about really refining how we interact with third-party organisations and our own uh, services and our tenants, our commercial tenants, so that everybody's sort of uh, safe and everything's uh, sufficient as it possibly can be. Sure. Um, I think Jeremy wants to say something. Can I just, can I just add to that? Just, just in the sense of... 
In short, yes, we, we are working on a property strategy. We had one adopted by Cabinet in 2019, and we're working on updating that property strategy, and it will include updated policies on things like acquisitions, disposals, and so on. And it will address some of the things in the scheme of delegation, just to clarify uh, how decisions are taken and so on by members. So that work is in train, and we hope to bring that property strategy to Cabinet in... Well, let's, well I, I think it's because it's going to be such a, a, a big piece of work, I think it will come in... Um, in sort of bite-sized pieces and I'd hope the first bite-sized piece which will be looking specifically around um, VCS organizations and how we properly support those through property um, I'm going to try and push that towards the end of the year um, early next year <laughs> that's what I'm aiming for but it's again it's quite a quite a piece of work we do as Jeremy says we do have um, property strategy in in place but it's again it's looking at all aspects of that and uh, reviewing it and that in itself is quite a you know, multifaceted uh, piece of work thank you both um, councillor Selden yeah, just one final request from me would it be possible to provide councillors with a list of all the assets that you're looking at in their individual wards because I think there might be something that we might be able to contribute to the process yes yeah, so our so yes, I, um, we we have a um, the property list, and that's um, available. I think it's even publicly available. So um, we 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 can send that with to again if you like. Sorry, councillor. Apologies. Um, no, it was because uh, I remember when we discussed this last year. The properties on the council website um it, it was really hard to find them i think there was there was a section with properties that are listed for disposal and there was a couple of industrial units in charlton and then it, it was really hard to find so if you could send us the link that would be great yes thank we'll you if we can ask the, the scrutiny officer uh, we came and talked about this unique asset re review three months ago i think um, and following that, we sent through a link with all the list of all the properties, so we can make sure that's really sent to members. Yeah, thank you. So uh, I was specifically asking it by ward because there may be certain buildings that are referred to by one name locally or referred to by another name by yourself that I might not be able to say, oh, that's in such and such a ward quite easily. Uh, there's whole estates which aren't referred to by their estate names anymore and just in my ward alone. If it, if it doesn't have the ward names, it's probably got postcodes at least, I think. It will certainly have, um, it will certainly have po postcodes, but, but with a thousand properties to put on a, on a map, it's, um, so that, that, might take a, that might take some work to, uh, to do that. As Councillor Smith said, if you can provide us with the postcodes or maybe just a ward reference, uh, that would be something uh, I'd more than easily be able to do myself. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Are there any further questions? No? Nope. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time. Oh, thank you. Um, the last item is a commissioning of future reports. Um, there should be an additional one on their culture performance monitoring, um, which has been held over. Um, but is everybody happy to agree with that list? Yeah. Great, the meeting is closed. What a lovely, efficient meeting. <laughs> <laughs>